Hey, Top Presenters, let's step away from the mainstream and pop on our hipster specs and take a look at Evolutions. 2020 vision, just a pair of empty frames, dressing like a nut, oh no, I never got the grace. Now, when I say Evolutions, I mean two in particular, Flareon and Leafeon, both from Plasma Freeze. Now, they've both garnered some attention, and for good reason. They do what Evolutions are meant to do. They offer type coverage. Blastoise has been a big deck since it was released. Leafeon hits it for weakness and can achieve a one-shot on Keldeo for just one energy, with its attack, Energy Crush. For one colorless energy, deal damage to the defending Pokemon equal to the number of energy they have in play times 20. Now on Keldeo, that's the number of energy times 40 due to weakness. So they play 5 energy into the field, and that's anywhere on the field, not just the active, and you deliver 200 damage to the active. That's Keldeo down in 1. Blastoise, don't even ask. Black Kyram, I'll get back to you on that. But Leafeon is only one of our stars. We also have Flareon. He's being looked at due to the predicted rise of Gensec Garizion. Now, Flareon isn't as simple as Leafeon. It's not just attach, attack, take prizes. It requires more setup, due to Vengeance stating that for 2 colorless energy, deal 20 damage, plus 10 more for each Pokemon in your discard pile. Now, to one-shot Genesis Horizon, that would require you to have 7 Pokemon in your discard pile. Now, you can drop a lot of Pokemon quickly with cards like Ultra Ball or Computer Search or Juniper, but you can't just throw any Pokemon in there. You have to be selective, or you'll just throw away your setup. These two do share some interesting quirks, though. First off, neither of them are exits, meaning that they have instant access to the Silver Bangle, and when the cards they are countering tend to be exes, and we're looking at weaknesses, all of a sudden numbers become a lot simpler, or they just play and hinder your opponent. Leafeon suddenly delivering an extra 60 damage. All of a sudden those 5 energies you need to deal 200 damage, that's become 3 energies to deal 180 damage. Your opponent can't set up Keldeo's attack anymore, and the best part is, Leafeon resists Keldeo, meaning that they need 4 energy to one-shot you, and they only take one prize, whereas if you have a second Leafeon available, you need one energy to return the favor, and you take two prizes. Instantly, the prize exchange is in your favor. Flareon needed 7 Pokemon in discard pile to handle Genesect of Arisen. Nope, now it's 4. Very easily achievable by turn 2, without having to waste a single card. And once again, the prize exchange in this match is in your favor. That's twice that I've mentioned that the prize exchange is in your favor. Why is that? Because the biggest decks all run Xs, and in this deck, you don't run any. You have to knock out three Pokemon. They have to deal with six. Put simply, your game is shorter than theirs. You have to worry about running out of resources less than your opponent will, and effectively, your opponent's mid-game can be your late game. They're looking at claiming their third or fourth prize, you're looking at five and six. But this deck isn't unstoppable with just Leafeon and Flareon. Nope, we've not mentioned Team Plasma, and how we can handle them. Long answer, we call in reinforcements. Short answer, Driftblim. And to cover our bases, we use the Driftblims from Plasma Blast and Dragons Exalted. First there's a Plasma Blast Driftblim with its ability Drifting Balloon, which lowers Driftblim's attack cost by one colorless energy for each Plasma Pokemon your opponent has in play. Now, personally I think that Plasma's minimum setup is three Plasma Pokemon, any less, and they're going to be setting up as they go instead of establishing a field. And oddly enough, Driftblim's only attack requires three colorless energy, meaning that essentially you're either attacking for free or your opponent isn't set up. And this is where Driftblim's greatest strengths come from. With its ability to attack for free, any energy attachments can go on to your evolutions to set them up as backup attackers, but you also have the bonus that Driftblim can discard a special energy attached to a defending Pokemon. And that energy discard leads us to Driftblim's Dragon's Exalted counterpart. For one colorless energy, this Driftblim deals 50 damage for each special energy in your opponent's discard pile. So, four special energy in the discard pile, that's 200 damage. But the fun doesn't end there, because our old friend the Silver Bangle can come into play on both Driftblims. And I start thinking, should I just rename this Silver Bangle the deck? Because it puts in so much work. For our Driftblim, Silver Bangle makes Derail into a zero energy attack that delivers 100 damage. A pretty safe two shot on pretty much anything in the format. 
and Shadow Steel can now deliver 180 damage with just three special engines as a scout pile. But now we look at another thing that helps out if you're planning to lead with your evolutions. Garbador. This guy's this guy just seems to get everywhere, and most of your deck doesn't use abilities, with the one exception being Plasma Blast Strickland. But this is here to slow down and hinder your opponent. It denies them access to abilities like Russian or Deluge, it stops Power Connect on Deoxys, and Red Signal and Verdant Wind are just pretty words on the card. Garbodar is here because he doesn't hurt you, but he can hurt your opponent, and in more games than not, I'm pretty sure he'd be a deciding factor. But that's the deck covered. Let's say we look at even more gaming news. Starting off with the fossil Pokemon from the previous two episodes, now we have their evolutions. Tyrant evolves into Remus! Tyrantrum. A cross between its old name of Tyrannosaurus and Runt, he now evolves into a Tyrannosaurus throwing a tantrum. And Amora now evolves into Aurorus, which is stated to learn the attack Freeze Dry, an attack last seen on Fossil Articuno, and is also super effective against Water type Pokemon, even though it's a nice type move. Along with this, we also have news for TTG. Firstly, we've been given the name for our first XY set. And strangely enough, it's going to be called XY. But even more interesting is the fact that the Kalos Starter Deck sets will be released alongside Legendary Treasures and will feature Fairy-type Pokemon and Fairy Energy. The decks are set to be released on the 8th of November, whereas X and Y will hit shelves on the 5th of February. And that's all for today. What do you guys think about the Kalos Starter set being released with Legendary Treasures and effectively mixing XY with Black and White? Let me know down below. And until next time, I'm Rato Joey. You guys are top percent. Laters.